welcome back once again and we must be now getting to the end of our project there's only two real things left to cover one of them you may not be covering at all so in the last episode we went through profiles which built onto our knowledge of the building template manager in this episode we noticed that first of all I've changed the cursor to be a little bit more viewable I got some feedback about this and hopefully this works a little bit better for people and we're gonna be looking at systems I realized in the last video we said we would look at opening windows but let's just look at the systems for the moment and how we run an analysis or well, I might do that in another video so in Apache we're gonna load up the Apache system tool which is at the top here looks like a cube with a thermostat again like all these things you can do this in tabular format if you want we're not gonna do that it's best at the beginning just to go through it as it is it is also I think we'll raise here Apache HVAC now Apache HVAC is a way of comprehensively designing a system that takes into account individual elements such as the heat exchange, valves, pumps, boiler arrangements, and you can go into a lot of detail here. However, we're not going to be doing that in this series of videos because we could spend, as I've said before, an entire series, quite a few videos just looking at that one thing. And I think there are already guides on YouTube that do that better than I can. So in Apache HVAC, if we load this up, sorry, in Apache Systems, if we load this up, we'll see what we're presented with this text. Uh, you may or may not have this UK NCM type here, but I wonder if I can open up the template. Oh, I can't open up the templates at the same time. But when we're thinking about modeling systems in IES simply in this we have to sort of make a couple of imaginative leaps the first thing you do is we kind of want to separate things down into how they are producing heat or cool and whether or not that's interacting with the air handling systems so for our house at the moment let's suppose that we have a simple boiler system We can see here we've got a couple of tools and I, first of all I'm going to run through these tabs and run through what things do and then for perhaps the UK viewers you may want to keep watching because we'll have a look at the UK NCM wizard which can simplify this quite a bit. So we have a boiler system, is it a heat pump? Well obviously not. We have seasonal efficiency. We have a seasonal efficiency and delivery efficiency. So delivery efficiency is based on a couple of factors. I'm not really sure to be perfectly honest, but the seasonal efficiency, if we take a something like a Worcestershire Bosch unit, I've just taken this one for the time being, we can add in some information here. So let's say this is a system boiler for reference, not a combi. I'm doing that so when we come to the hot water tower, I can show you how to put a cylinder in. So seasonal space efficiency, 94%, so 0.94. Then, uh, do we have an SCOP? Doesn't appear like it. It's going to be a little bit difficult. Some manufacturers may offer you the information straight up. Ah, here we go. As rated heat output, 88.5. Just going to see it here. And then its part load efficiency is at 98.7. So 88.5. Now, heat recovery. So one of the most common things that will occur, or errors that people might get have, is if they get to their results screen and they find that they have an extraordinarily high cooling and heating costs within the building, is that either the ventilation is too high, 
or ventilation is too high and they haven't put heat recovery on. So as this is a simple house, we, we won't have heat recovery in here. So we're just gonna leave that as blank. And then we can also change the ventilation heat recovery temperature. Again, this is one of those settings. If you do not have, you know, if you don't know, leave as blank. Is this a heat source used in conjunction with CHP? So we can model a CHP plant if we want. And what ranking does this heat source have of after the CHCP? So we can add in a sort of hierarchy of modeling. Now, if we go into the cooling, clearly this is a house, so it's not gonna have cooling, but we'll still run through the settings all the same. So again, we can decide on the means of cooling. We, we would say that this is naturally ventilated because that's what it is. But just for reference, mechanical ventilation, also the same thing, but air conditioning, we would set the meter. In this instance, it's just electricity. And I'm gonna quickly find a unit that is appropriate. So I found this little Toshiba mini split unit by Toshiba. Oh, I entirely rate performance. No manufacturers at the moment based on how easy it is to find the manufacturing data or product data, and this is this is pretty easy. So nominal EER. Let's have a look what we have here. EER. We have an EER of cooling of 4.35. We have an SEER of 6.73. And we have an SSEER, or do we have a value for that? If we don't, we're gonna leave it blank. Nope, it's blank. Okay, fine. And, and that would be how we put this in. And then finally, we can also say whether this is a mixed mode building. So perhaps this only comes in for certain times during the year and the rest of the time it's natural ventilation or mechanical. Heat rejection, pump and fan power, percentage of rejected heat. Can't say I've ever touched that setting myself, but it's there if you want to play around with it. And again, it goes back to those things. Oh, there's a lot of things within IES that we can do and play about with, but we're not always going to be fiddling with them every single project. Now, what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this back to natural ventilation, because that's the reality of our building. It goes to the hot water tab. So in this instance, we have, let's go back to our green star. Our domestic hot water delivery efficiency. So again, this is gonna be the efficiency of the boiler to be able to deliver hot water. So in theory, this should take into account the distribution losses or the losses due to using a heat exchanger within your cylinder. But for the moment, we're just gonna go with the re uh, typical efficiency. Uh, at rated a heat at high temperature regime, was hot water is going to be at high temperature regime, it's gonna be at 8060 to provide that chlorination cycle. So we're gonna go with 88.5. Mean cold inlet, oops, sorry, that had to be underneath one, 88.5. Mean cold water inlet temperature, 10 degrees within the UK. This is a standard assumption. Hot water supply temperature, six degrees, also a standard assumption for the chlorination. And now we can model in that cylinder. So we're gonna say there's a 300 litre tank. And then we have options. So option one, is we go and pull a tank from online. And uh, if I pause the video for a moment, we can pull one of these from say Heat Ray Sadia, Mega Flow Tank. Let's get a tank products, unvented cylinder. Let's say Mega Flow Eco, that's fine.
download brochures and manuals. get the storage losses on this no indirect here we go so here we go we have the standing storage losses remember this is in kilowatt hours liters a day so we would need to divide this figure through by 300 in order to get the kilowatt lossage per per liter per day. Alternatively, if we don't have this information, we can add in some information about the insulation on there. Just add in, does it give a thickness of the insulation? No, it just tells us what it is. Fine. Regardless, we can add all this in. Thickness, let's give it a nominal thickness for the moment of say 30 millimeters. Does this system have a secondary circulation? So are we pumping the hot water return? Again, we can work that out. Now, your circulation losses is gonna be a product of the type of insulation that is on your hot water supply. Again, this is pulling information from places and just making a record of where you found it. Kingspan have this information for reference. Pump power, you can, we can leave this as nominal for the moment. Loop length, this can be difficult depending on when in the project we're doing this. So if we're doing this at the very beginning when perhaps the building's layouts aren't particularly well known, then we might have to use rules of thumb here. But if it's later on, then obviously we can work out the length. So if you're very, very, very early on in a project, then my suggestion would be take the take the two furthest points on the on the floor plate, and then add that to the height of the building. Times it by two, so that would be the loop length, uh, and then add a little bit extra just to be give yourself a margin. So if our point to point distance is to say 10 meters, then we would add 10 meters, the building height, four meters. So that'd be 10 plus four plus 10 plus four. So that's 28 plus a little bit of a margin, say 10%, 30.8. Uh, and that gives us then an approximation for the loop length. Is it perfect? Absolutely not but it gives us a rough ballpark figure. Then we can go on to solar heating. Uh, if we have solar heating, we can add that in here. I won't go too much into that. Auxiliary energy, this is for things like fans in the project. Air supply. Again, we can set a temperature from profile here, or we can just keep it as external air. Most people will just keep this as external air, the same as the cool air supplying. Costings, we can add this in if we want, and controls, we can add this if we want. But in reality, I, you'll very rarely be using these last three tabs, and only sometimes using this, this auxiliary ventilation, auxiliary energy. For that matter, the one, the last five tabs are very rarely touched. It's mainly just heating, cooling, and hot water, and that's that. We can add numerous systems in, and this can be very handy if we have, say, a couple of different means of supplying water with, or supplying energy within the building, heating or cooling. So if we have a system that's, say, if we have a water source, air source heat pump. Providing domestic hot water, then we could add that in here, and we could apply that 
So when we go to our template manager, we could have a separate system supplying our, if our supplying our domestic hot water, and that would be okay. Now I did say what can be useful is if you're very early on in the project and this is a UK based project, what you can do is you can use the UK NCM types like this. And what this does is it gives you a default set of system criteria that you can use for part L compliance or you can just use as a basic system before you start optioneering. It provides a useful baseline. So if we hit this, you'll see that there's a lots of different types of systems available. Let's just use choose something simple for a moment. Central heating using radiators. It will ask us what the source is. Uh, we're going to go with an LTHW boiler. If we don't know what the value is, it will tell us. As it was, we did know what the value is. It was Green Star. 94 cooling system there isn't this is the central heating is radiators uh, because we don't know any of this information we leave as blank leave as blank natural ventilation okay and we can see then it's loaded in some values for us which is very helpful So that's all that needs to be done for that. And then, okay. And then our system is effectively modeled. And we are ready in the next one, either to do some simulation, if we are not going to be looking at natural ventilation in more depth. If we are looking at natural ventilation in more depth, we would head on to Macroflow. Thanks for watching. I'll try and get this video up as soon as possible.